Well, I started my career when videotape was actually invented, when it became real. It was called Umatic Tapes. That's when I was about 14 years old. And up until that point, weddings had only been shot on Super 8 cameras. It was only three minutes. Suddenly there was a magical machine that could last for hours. So at 14 years old, I started a business of videotaping people's weddings for as long as they want. And some people wanted weddings that went for 36 hours and they wanted it all filmed. I learned to direct because in the early days, the bride would come down the aisle and I'd say, Ooh, can you go and do it again? And they'd run back up again and they'd walk all the way down. I'd say to the groom, and make them go up again. I could make the bride and groom go up and down the aisle 20 times. And that's when I began to direct. I was incredibly ambitious and incredibly fearless. I mean, I didn't care. The amount of times I had doors slammed in my face and people tell me to go away, I'd just come back. And I'd come back and I'd come back and I'd come back. Until eventually people got sick of me and started giving me work because I was annoying them. It's all based on humour for me. Uh, a lot of the films are quite cruel, but they've also got a lot of heart because I think the pain comes with a lot of the cruelty. So the films have all, I've only ever, I've done one drama, one pure drama called Eye of the Beholder with Ewan McGregor and Ashley Judd. That was a very successful movie. I like to make people laugh. I also, the big one is I really like surprising people too. You know, the thing I love about this job more than anything else is you get to dream particularly as a writer-director, the most satisfying part of the whole process for me comes from writing. Because I have a blank page on my computer and I can write anything. We're in the dream industry. So what job, what job gives you that? Some days I hate Priscilla. I can't stand Priscilla. I call it the bus and chain. It's like I wander around with a chain attached to me and a bloody great pink bloody bus drives me insane and any film you ever make and I've made some much better films people just go well it's not Priscilla is it it was the first film of a new LGB rights generation it was the first film of a generation that celebrated after a decade of two decades of HIV and AIDS so I still have people 20 years on are still saying thank you for kind of changing the world that's not a bad thing to be lumbered with after all these years. Uh, the real bus now lives in Broken Hill. She lives in Broken Hill, and if you ever see the film again, they, uh, they walk into a, a pub with terrible paintings all over the wall, and it's the world's worst hotel. The real bus lives out there now as a tourist attraction. Rio Atiyama was, I mean, astonishing. I was so excited when I got there, I thought, wow, I get to meet everybody, and, and, and we didn't because they shot their block and I shot my block and their shot. So therefore we never got a chance, any of us, to meet each other until we went to the premiere. And that was kind of sad. I kept thinking I could hang out with some idols. I recreated in the film the day I first came to Rio and somebody from the festival picked me up and we're still together 25 years later. Look, we are going into the golden age of television again and that is I've never been interested in television, uh, but now they're giving you so much freedom within television. I mean, it's really hard trying to cram, you know, we work all our lives to make 95 minutes. My films are always right on, and it's a lot of training to come into two hours, 95 minutes to two hours. It takes years of training. Now they're saying to me, go as long as you want. 